Did you think I was gone forever? I start with some scrap maple pallet wood by planing one side, then ripping the piece down to two smaller pieces on my table saw. I only cut partially through the piece to make it easier on my band saw to complete the cut. I then thickness the pieces to final size, then rip them to final width. These will be the top and bottom outside of the box. These two pieces are cut to length, and then a small rabbit is cut into the back edge. I then cut a piece of 3 quarter inch plywood to width and length and use this for the center divider. I then cut up more of the maple into thin strips to be glued to form the openings in the front panel. This method is far easier than trying to cut out square holes from a solid board. I can then mark and transfer the marks to each piece for glue up so I know where to place the glue and where not to. I set everything carefully in place with two bar clamps and make sure the pieces don't slip around during clamping. The glue squeeze out is then wiped away as best I can. After the glue is set overnight, I pop the panel out of my clamps and begin running it through my thickness planer until it's down to a quarter inch thick. I then mark the final lengths and cut it down with my miter saw. Last for the front panel is to sand down to 220 grit, making sure to hit the insides as well as the faces. Next I can begin work on the indicator sliders by marking a piece of walnut with the width of the slots. Then at the router table with a rabbiting bit installed, I carefully sneak up on my marks, making sure I have a push block from behind to steady the small piece. Then at the miter saw, I cut the two pieces to final length. I then mark the center of the two pieces and bring them to my drill press. I start with a pilot hole all the way through and then come back with a 1 inch Forstner bit and drill out the hole from both sides to avoid blowout. I then head back to the router table with a chamfer bit installed and give a heavy chamfer to the inside of the holes. I then take some thin red oak strips and cut them to thinner strips which will be glued onto the back of the walnut indicator sliders to retain them in the front panel and some weight is put on them to dry overnight. Next it's onto the sides of the box which again are cut from scraps of maple. I can use the top, bottom and center divider pieces to mark the thickness of the rabbits and dados required to be cut into the side pieces. I cut these grooves to the table saw with my flat tooth blade, taking several passes nibbling away at them between my markings. I check the fit with the other pieces, then move on to cutting the rabbit for the back panel the same as the top and bottom pieces from earlier. I then mark the center for two holes in each side piece and center punch my hole location. I start with a 7 8 Forstner bit which will hold an R6 2RS bearing in place and sit flush against the board. I then drill out 25 64 inch hole for clearance of a 3 8 inch dowel. The two holes on the left side are blind holes that don't go through and the two on the right go all the way through. I then mark the 12 and 6 o'clock position of the through holes for a smaller blind hole which will house my small spring and ball bearing. I then use a block of wood to seat the bearings into both sides. The 7 8 inch Forstner bit makes a very nice press fit. Now it's on to making the hexagonal prisms to display the scores. I start again by milling down some maple pallet wood on my jointer and thickness planer to get four square sides. I then set my table saw to 30 degrees and start cutting out my hexagon shape one slice at a time. Now, as you will see, my rip fence is not what I would call parallel to the blade. I also do not have a zero clearance insert, so the result is projectiles shooting into my garage door. And this is why you don't stand directly behind the blade. Sorry, right, let's get a new garage door anyways. I then cut them to final length at the chop saw and begin nibbling away a chunk that was missing from one of the pieces at the table saw using my miter gauge.
Over at the bandsaw, I cut off a small piece of maple to be used as a plug for the now notched out piece. This is cut to length and glued in place and left overnight to dry. I used the table saw to take off the majority of the excess, then clamp the piece in my linear actuator vise to make it flush with a hand plane and some sanding. I then mark out the center of the hexagons and drill out a 3 8 inch hole 1 inch deep into each end. Finally, it's over to my homemade CNC machine to start engraving the numbers. I utilized a couple of boards to create an origin point for each face to speed up the time between cuts. I held the pieces in place by inserting a 3 8 inch dowel into one end and clamping both ends to the table. After all 12 sides were engraved, I began to paint the numbers with some black acrylic paint. The excess paint was then sanded off to reveal crisp edges on the numbers. The finish I used on this whole project was boiled linseed oil. I applied a heavy coat and wiped off the excess with some paper towels. A 3 8 inch dowel was glued into each left side, leaving only about 3 8 inch sticking out. I then cut to length and width the plywood for the back of the scoreboard. Then at the router table with a keyhole bit installed, I plunge into my marked lines and move the board away from the fence to create a mounting hole for installing on the wall. Next is time to start final assembly. I start by laying everything out and gluing the longer 3 8 inch dowels to the right side of the score tumbler. I can then apply glue to all the grooves in the side pieces. This project uses no mechanical fasteners and is plenty strong with just the wood glue. I then apply glue along the edges and middle divider for attaching the front on next. I found it easier to flip the front upside down and attach the body on top of it. The back piece was temporarily put in place to help square the unit as it was left overnight in clamps to dry. Remember, keep calm and add more clamps. Get your t-shirt today. Link in the description. After taking it out of the clamps, I removed the back plywood piece to properly glue it in place. Unfortunately, the corner squeeze out made this more difficult than it needed to be. At the bandsaw, I cut to final length the 3 8 inch dowels for mounting the handles. Next I use a flush trim bit in my router to even up any overhanging sides and complete work on the unit by sanding down to 220 grit. Again, the finish I used on this was boiled linseed oil, wiping off the excess after applying. Next it's time to cut out the handles which are also made from walnut. I ran a program on my homemade CNC to cut the indents and perimeter shape using a 45 degree v-groove bit. These grooves will help register against the ball bearing and spring to allow for easy alignment of the score numbers. A 3 8 inch blind hole is then drilled onto the inside of the handles. The hexagon shape is roughed out at the bandsaw and brought to the line on the disc sander. It's very important that when I glue on the handles I have the spring in the hole first followed by the ball bearing. I used a couple of pieces of wax paper with a hole in the middle to stop the glue squeeze out and provide some spacing off the side of the scoreboard. These wax pieces also helped keep everything in place while I slid on the handle. 
Before letting dry overnight, I make sure to feel the ball register against the grooves on the inside of the handle and align that to the number faces. And with that, the project is complete. Now you can see how easily the slider moves back and forth and that very satisfying sound and feel of the ball bearing registering against the detents. Do that again with the lights. Oh, hold on. Do you want do you want another set of lights to kill the shadows in there? No. How do you look? Two points. Woo. Twenty-one. None of this is usable. Why?